if somebody offered you more money to stay at your current job, would you take it or would you look for other opportunities? Well, this is the situation with James Harden, star basketball player of the Houston Rockets. He turned down $50 million, which would make him the number one paid player in the NBA, making more money than LeBron James. I think LeBron James makes him around $35, $39 million. But he'd be the number one paid player had he taken this contract to stay with the Houston Rockets for $50 million. So why would he do it? By the way, just up front, since you guys are watching this, I appreciate your time and attention watching this video. But I want you to let you know, this is not from the perspective of a sports analyst. This is not from the, sport, uh, uh, the perspective of someone that's betting on sports. This is not from the perspective of somebody that is a, uh, a sports junkie. Actually, I kind of am. But I'm taking it from the perspective of an entrepreneur. I'm taking it from the perspective of career, business, being a first generation cash flow millionaire. So if you care to hear a perspective from that point and how we apply sports to business, stick around. When I'm looking at James Harden, Houston Rockets say, okay, come stay here. Don't get mad. I know your former coach left. Your former coach left for a different team. Don't get mad. Stay here. Let's win a championship. Let's pay you $50 million. By the way, respectable owner of the Houston Rockets, Tillman Fertitta, who you may have seen his reality show called Billion Dollar Buyer, owns a ton of restaurants and he come up and, and, and help uh, entrepreneurs and he show billionaire buyer to, to buy their products and put in all his hotels and restaurants all across the world and uh, respectable owner uh, obviously as uh, somebody that wins in business somebody that you want owning a basketball team but things didn't work out at Houston Rockets they tried they tried Russell Westbrook came, came there they tried they tried and they just couldn't turn the tide they just couldn't turn the corner to win a championship so people are leaving People are scattering. People are looking at different options. So is James Harden. And so the opportunity comes up, says, hey, your buddy's over there, Kevin Durant, playing for the Brooklyn Nets. Hey, your buddy's over there, Kyrie Irving, playing for the uh, for the Brooklyn Nets. Hey, we have a winning owner over here, Joseph Tsai. That's it, Joseph T-S-I-A, right? Uh, he, he is uh, uh, one of the co-founders of Alibaba, right? Partners of Jack Ma and bought the Brooklyn Nets for a billion dollars. A couple billionaires here buying up teams competing at a different level here in, in a sports arena in basketball. But guess what? This is what Steven Sy just did. He, uh, he's got a coach there by, uh, by uh, uh, Steven Nash. Everybody knows who Steven Nash is. He's gonna be coaching there for the very first year. And guess who he, they recruited? They recruited Harden's former head coach who put schemes together to make him a huge offensive weapon for the, for the Houston Rockets. So why am I saying all this? Why did, he, why did James Harden turn down a contract to play for the Houston Rockets for $50 million? And what lessons can we learn about current opportunities and future hopes of where you're going in business, where you're going for your career, so therefore you can think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Here's a perspective. Number one, you gotta have an organization all the way from the top in every different level that's not only committed to winning with their talk, but also committed to winning with their walk. When you see a head coach take off, when you see players leaving, it kind of tends to believe like, hey, we're around here, we're here to win, we're here to win, we're here to win. But actions always speak louder than words. It's okay to talk the talk as long as it's back, as long as you walk the walk. See, I've learned over time, a lot of people have made me promises, a lot of people make you promises. A lot of people say great things, well, come over here, you pay you more money over here, and you have an awesome opportunity over here, you can have awesome, fun over here and this and this and that and things one thing will lead to another and it'll pay up because and you're thinking okay that sounds good sounds good sounds good and then you get over there you realize it wasn't the right fit for you it wasn't the right culture uh, you didn't really like the boss you didn't really like the people around you you really didn't think that the organization was all the way committed to winning maybe it's one person at the top not not the uh, people on, under these is committed to winning uh, from the middle management on, on down they're not committed to winning why through their actions another part of this conversation is number two if you're looking for an opportunity, not only does that organization have to be committed to winning at all different levels, from the coach, from the owner, to the to the ball boys, it's a winning culture. It's something that's it's inside the fabric and the air of which you breathe with inside the organization, that company culture, your company culture. But number two, the reason why he's thinking about going to the Brooklyn Nets is because he wants to win a championship. And the reality is, James Harden was that close to winning a championship, I guess it was LeBron James, right? Yeah. He was so close to winning a championship, never, Never got, never got the championship. But James Harden wants to win a championship. He wants to know that, listen, I played this game of basketball. I gave him all, all. I innovated the game. I became this type of score every time the ball was in my hands. 
I think he's the number one scorer. Every time the ball is in his hands, pound for pound, he scores more times with the ball in his hands than any other player in the NBA. I think there's a stat out there that, that, that shared that. But he's this guy without a championship. And he wants to win a championship. And if that means he goes there to reunite with his former uh, uh, a teammate from uh, Oklahoma Thunder, which is uh, Kevin Durant, uh, goes there, plays with Kyrie Irving. Obviously, players that also want to win uh, championships and win another championship in Kevin Durant. This is this is uh, heaven for him. In other words, he may not get paid as much because these other stars are over there. He may not get paid as much because the Houston Rockets want to potentially rebuild around him and keep the the, the, the team growing, the franchise growing, and sales growing, ticket sales, and all that stuff. That we want to upset the season ticket holders. But he wants to go over there and win a championship. And so what I'm thinking about here, right in my city of Chicago, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan for 12 years. He was not the number one paid player in the NBA after Rookie of the Year, after multiple championships, after Slam Dunk champion, all the Defensive Player of the Year. Michael Jordan was not the number one paid player until his 13th year in the NBA. So, what, what does this matter? Well, if you understand your values and your principles, if you have savings, if you have cash on your side, so therefore you're not being pulled in this direction to this direction because somebody's offering you just a bigger check because temporarily it satisfied an urgent current need, you can stick to your values and principles. That's why making money, reinvesting back into your business, making money, saving money, making money, reinvesting money, making money, tucking it away for future opportunities, is such a good thing to do because it keeps you clear. It keeps you your head above water so you can breathe and think that somebody doesn't stroke a check and doesn't buy you away and you abandon your values and principles. James Harden's sticking with it. He's sticking with the fact that I might get paid less than what I'm getting paid right now. I might get paid less than LeBron. I might get paid less than these other stars, but I want a stinking championship. Why? What other opportunities does it lead up to post your, your playing days? You don't want to be known as the guy that, that put it all on the floor, that gave it his all, but never won a championship. If you watch the, N the NBA show, how often do you see Charles Barkley getting ridden all over the time and Shaq is riding him all the time, but you talk to talk, you talk to talk, but you never won a championship. You talk to talk, you talk to talk, but you never won a championship. See, James Harden, I don't think, wants to be in a situation where you, you play the game, you're at this elite level, but never won a championship. He wants to win a championship, I believe. I believe the guy that puts his heart and soul, sweat, blood, sweat, and tears, his beard in the game, he wants to win a championship. The third thing that I'd be considering if I was... James Harden, right? Number one, you gotta make sure everybody wants to win at every different level of the organization. Number two, there's other opportunities that open up when you win a championship. You might wanna win a championship in your organization. You wanna lead a project. You wanna you want lead an initiative, right? Uh, you're the number one producer in your region, your state, your, your country. You're the number one guy. Yes, you win a championship, however you define that. You have that as your reputation. Again, leads to me the third thing. The third thing is about thinking long-term, thinking legacy. See, oftentimes people, derail themselves for the multi-million dollar dreams and goals and hopes. They derail themselves from consistency because they go through life as a pinball. Bing, 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 and never really accomplish much. They think, hang on for the long term. You're gonna be known, or somebody who says, hey, you're, you're gonna be known as one of the guys that were good in the league, you're above average, maybe you've been elite, but you're just good enough to be around. You never separated. You never got focused. You never, you never planned for life after this season or this game or this week or this month or this quarter or this year. You weren't thinking long term. One thing I realized hanging around multimillionaires, one thing I hang around with my mentor is a deca millionaire. One thing I hang, uh, uh, learned hanging around guys who make billions of dollars a year. One thing I realized about these guys, these guys are so far ahead above where they're currently at. They stand on the shoulders of giants so therefore they can see further. See, James Harden wants to come with his buddies and win a championship potential, I think, in my perspective. He wants to stand on these shoulders of these basketball giants so they can they can see further, they'll build the relationships over time. They've, they've, they've earned the rightful respect, common respect to one another so they can build something for the long term, not just for the short term. Sure, the short term thing is winning championship and multiple championships, but they're thinking long term, they're thinking legacy. I want to be able to look at my kids and say, listen, I put my heart, sweat, tears, blood, sweat, time, attention, focus, your birthdays, my birthdays, holidays, away from family, I want to be able to say, you know what, kids, my legacy to you is your daddy did all this stuff and thought with a long-term perspective. I want to hand you a legacy that your daddy, your family, your last name, the Harden last name is a championship type of last name. And you've got that as your birthright.
So as I wrap up this episode, I want to know what you think. Why do you think James Harden turned down $50 million to potentially get traded to the Brooklyn Nets? Why do you think he did? Why would you do it? I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you're thinking. And if you're watching this on Facebook, guys, uh, please hit that like button, mash that like button, follow our business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notification, be alerted next time we upload our next episode. By the way, we just launched our merchandise seven-figure squad type gear. Again, clothing and hats, socks, uh, 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 things to remind you to start and continue to think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first-generation cash flow millionaire changing around forever your last name and legacy for the rest of your lives but that's it follow our youtube channel and uh, follow our facebook page too as well with that being said guys from chicago i'm your money smart guy and until we meet again continue to live smart continue to love smart and be money smart today